Governor Alex Oti has approved the appointment of Pastor Jerry's wife, Dr. Eno Eze, as the chairman of the State Civil Service Commission. The appointment was contained in a statement issued Monday evening by the Chief Press Secretary of the Governor, Mr. Kazie Oko. Other appointments by the Governor, in, according to the statement, include Dr. Kalu Yukalo, Executive Secretary, Primary Health Care, Professor Ijo Amandoka, CMD, Abia State University Teaching Hospital, Absut, and Dr. N.O.E. Kamano, CMD, General Hospital, Aba. The Governor also appointed Dr. Odor Charles Bike as the Chief Executive Officer, CEO, Health Management Board, Abomma Okobasi, Senior Special Advisor, SSA, Ease of Doing Business, and Mrs. Victoria Omobiko, MD, CEO, Abia State Signage and Advertising Agency. APSA. Okay, you can see the list and you will see that the number of Dr. of Dr. Eno Jerry Eze, that wife of Pastor Jerry Eze is nine. So check out number nine. We see her. Now coming to that, we see that Pastor Jerry Eze was seen with Peter Obi recently, and that was where everything happened. Enjoy the video. Roll it. Hey, wait, don't play that video yet. Welcome to Lost TV. This is your home of all daily Nigerian trending entertainment news and gossip you need to see and watch. Yes, we keep you entertained 247. Yes, 247. So just subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified anytime we drop the latest we do concerning your news and trending gist. So roll the video now. Roll it. This one na good news. Oh, I am gonna gather gather. Make I tell on our thing they happen. The current Nigerian best governor and the only Labour Party governor in Nigeria, the Abia State governor, Governor Alex Oti, appoint Pastor Jerry as a wife, that is Dr. Eno Jerry, as chairman, Abia State Civil Service Commission, on the March 18th, 2024. But that's not all though, that brought us here. Now, fast forwarding to March 20th, 2024, being today, the pastor himself, that is Pastor Jerry Eze, NSPPD, what God cannot do does not exist, Pastor. Don't come out to come acknowledge and crown Peter Obi as the next president of Nigeria, said it is God's will. That it will happen in our eyes, even though that there will be forces and wahala everywhere to make sure he didn't see the position of Nigerian president, but it will surely come to pass and they should mark his word. He crowned Peter B, the president of Nigeria already, when we have Tunibu already in seat, who so is yet to finish his remaining seven years. Hey, that is not all though. Right now, him don't belong to Labour Party and that means say that he will be the official spiritual director of Labour Party. Hey, um, I was even thinking that Labour Party will come down after the election. That all these they are gra -gra going to court and the initial gra -gra was just for the say the things two day recent. But um, after one year, Labour Party is still pushing stronger. Obedience are still obedience. Like everything is still worsening stronger, even though that they did not win, they still did not give up. Unlike Nigerians, yes, now nah, I know how Nigerians. This is my almost my thirty, so I, I have like I have witnessed so many elections, presidential elections. I can tell you for fact that Nigerians always move along when things don't work out as they plan, but they always move along. But this time around, hmm, like they are not even sending anybody they are still supporting standing strong they are not even going to go and look for their stomach infrastructure by looking for appointments or trying to mingle with the latest government in power but they are still supporting their own candidates even though their candidate is not even the person that gives us money let's say that they are still standing with the person because the person is giving them something that is making them to stand yet hmm. It is Peter Obio and they are standing strong. And with the evidence of what is happening in Abia State, you will see that if Labour Party should have the chance to take Nigeria, we might see a bit of the promised land we have been praying for. But before I go into the full details, I get another one. It'd be like saying that women, they take over now for official duties. Because after this Pastor Jerry wife, Eno Jerry, is it? 
collect this appointment. Another one happened, another woman, make a show now. Make one and see, say Zenith Bank don't get new MD. Yes, as you can see from your screen. Zenith Bank appoints Adora Umeoji as first female CEO. Hey, hey, Omo. Zenith Bank PLC has announced the foremost banker, Dr. Adora Umeoji, as its new group managing director and chief executive officer. The appointment was disclosed on Tuesday in a statement signed by the company secretary, Michael Otu, which was filed with the Nigerian Exchange Limited. Umeoji appointment will take effect from June 1, 2024, following the expiration of office of the current GMD, Dr. Ebenezer Onyagu, on May 31, 2024. Dame Dr. Adora Umeji is the first female GMD CEO since the inception of the bank, and her appointment is consistent with the bank's executive transition tradition, succession plan, and strategy of grooming leaders from within. Part of the statements read. Before this appointment, Umeoji was the deputy managing director of the bank since October 28, 2016, and with nearly 30 years of banking experience, of which 26 years has been with Zenith Bank, she is an alumnus of Harvard Business School, where she attended the Advanced Management Program. Umeoji is also an alumnus of Columbia Business School, with a certificate of the Global Banking Program. She holds a bachelor's degree in sociology from the University of Jos. Bachelor's degree in accounting and a first class honor degree in law from Bayes University, Abuja. She holds a Master of Law from the University of Salford, United Kingdom, a Master of Business Administration from the University of Calabar, and also a Doctorate in Business Administration from Apollos University, United States of America. Imoji also holds a certificate of a certificate in economics for business from the prestigious MIT Sloan School of Management. USA and has attended various management programs in renowned universities around the world, including the Strategic Thinking and Management Program at Wharton Business School, United States of America. Yes, yeah, so as you can see now, that is a huge win for the women. A round of applause, please. You can comment it on your on the comment section that you clapped. If you're really happy seeing women achieving that, only achieving hair and Hook up money. Now back to waiting carriers come here. No, we will not deviate. To the full details about Pastor Jerry Eze endorsing P2B as next governor, as sorry, as next president of Nigeria, and also the wife getting appointment. When we go into the full details. To the full details of what we're talking about, the other state governor, Dr. Ale Sotiamundi, appointed Dr. Enoch. J. Eze, as chairman of the Abia State Civil Service Commission, Dr. Eno, who is married to Pastor Jerry Eze, the founder of Streams of Joy International and leader of New Season Prophetic Prayers and Declaration, NSPPD, was announced chairman of the commission in a statement issued by the governor's chief press secretary, Mr. Kazir Oko. Dr. Eno, Jerry, a burning and shining light, a transformational catalyst, a question share speaker and a dynamic preacher, which is very significantly is the female voice that was on the widely acclaimed global prayer platform news using prophetic prayers and declarations and SPPD alongside her husband, Pastor Jerry Eze, better known for the slogan, What God Cannot Do Does Not Exist. Pastor Eno, as she's fondly called, currently sees as the resident pastor of Streams of Joy, Omaha, an expression of their but joining ministry, Streams of Joy International. Also working at the heart of her life's assignment, she actively supports women to pursue their God-ordained destinies through mentoring, coaching, and leadership at the Women on Fire Network, an organization dedicated to empowering and raising pastors' wives, women in ministry, and women on fire for God since the inception of the Women on Fire Network in 2020. She has held several pastors' wives and women in ministry conferences all over Nigeria and continues to serve thousands of members all over the world as far as the United Kingdom, United States, United Arab Emirates, South Africa, and Canada. Pastor Eno holds an MBA in Entrepreneur Management from the Entrepreneurship Institute of Australia, 
a master's in international human resource management from the University of Greenwich, London, and is currently concluding her PhD in human resources management. With extensive years in management, she consults for multinational companies, mega churches, and serve non profit organizations. She is the lead consultant, MD, and CEO of Geno Management Solutions, a human resource company. So before you rush and say, ah, the governor is doing, I am in my mother to give appointments, just go and look at the woman's portfolio. I guess she is even higher than the office that assigned to her. So don't come out and rant and say, why is he giving women such a position? First of all, go and check who is that woman that got that position. She's someone who you will live in as her dreams. So please, kindly tell me what you have on your mind over this particular issue we just discussed now. If it's going to be a better way to elevate the civil service of Abia State, or you think it's going to be a way to buy people to still love him as governor of Abia State. So tell me what's on your own mind. And don't forget, if you are new to my channel, kindly do the needful. Press the subscribe button and Press the bell icon beside the subscribe button to be notified anytime I drop new G's. I was a very angry person. I could get angry for almost anything easily. You know, hot tempered, that's even the word. Yeah. Hot tempered. You know, so I was hot tempered and um and probably because I watched my parents, I, I didn't I didn't I didn't really regard people. I didn't know how to give respect to people. So these were things and I was stubborn. I was very stubborn. Wow. I was stubborn and highly opinionated. Wow. <laughs> That's the combinations I think. That's serious. Yeah, That's serious. explosive. I'm telling you, highly <laughs> opinionated. So and I loved to argue. Whoa. I could argue. Oh, you can't win me in an argument. <laughs> oh, and I used to argue off points. I don't know if you know I'm off point. Yeah. I give it's not making fact. sense, not but, making, but because things. I am opinionated, yes. so I will stand my ground on whatever mm -hmm. I'm saying. And no matter what you're saying, I can't understand you. I don't even want to understand you, if, except you understand me. Wow. And these were things I grew up with. And because I grew up like that, I didn't even know it was a problem. And my parents won't have pointed it out as a problem because I got it from them, so we are all alike. <laughs> so it was when I now left and got into the university, I think where I even found out that I actually had the problem when I met my husband, mm. because I didn't know I had a problem. I actually thought I was good. And you know, I love to smile, so I was a smiley kind of person. So it's only when you get to me that you now, you know, you see anger, but if you meet me, you will never know. Oh, yeah. uh, so, yeah. so it was just yeah. beautiful, you know. So I didn't, didn't see it as a problem until I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And in our relationship, we went out for five years. We went out for five years before we got married. So it was in that, you know, in our going out, then he, he starts to point out things. And I'm like, what is the problem? As in, I don't see it as a problem. When I was arguing, people used to tell me, you know, people used to hail me. <laughs> for my arguing skills, <laughs> you know, and, and they'll be telling me how I have had two people want to sponsor me to read law because I could argue. <laughs> so it was, a, it, was, it was a strength. Yes. <laughs> that was what I thought. It was a strength. Mm. So how do I now meet a man and he's telling me that this is not a strength? Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is terrible. Yeah. You know, you can't continue that way. So it was a lot to battle with. And not knowing, you know, by the time we got married, this thing started to put a strain in our relationship. And it became so bad because the, the man I married was such a an amazing man. He came from a background that was very peaceful. He's a very peaceful person till date. He is very peaceful. He doesn't like problems, trouble, nothing. But me, I came from a home that did not know what peace looked like. So peace for us was you shout, and that's peace. Yeah. When it's not peace, is when you start boxing, <laughs> when you start fighting. Eh? <laughs> so if I'm talking, we're like, why are you raising your voice? Why? I'm like, me. I said, there's no problem. We've not, nothing is happening yet. <laughs> you know, so my husband couldn't just understand where I was coming from. And I think another problem I had was that I didn't really have an understanding of what God had put in his life mm -hmm. and who he was and who he was to people. And because everything I 
did was affecting him even to ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a ministration you're going to go for. You don't want to have an argument before a ministration. But I didn't even understand all these things at that time. So I can make him so upset before he goes for administration. I think it just took God to help my husband during that period because you have to show up to the people and you have to give to them, yeah. you know, and it's now that I'm doing ministry. It's now that God has, that I now understand the place I put him in, you know, those years, because you, you, you need, you need, you need a, a, a mind that is, you know, at peace and you need a free spirit even to receive from God. You don't need offense. You can't, you can't, you can't receive from the Holy Spirit with offense. So you imagine what I was doing. I think the devil was just using me, you know, at that point. And these things were things that caused a lot of strain to the extent that at some point my husband even, you know, stopped talking much to me. He'll just be quiet. You, I can say everything I want to say. He'll just be nodding his head. And you're expecting that he shouldn't just nod, but he was just nodding because... Because, you know, I don't know the next thing I'll say and you flip, you know, you, you go off and, and I won't know how to control you. So, and just to go back to what you said, sir, about, you know, him saying I left him. Do you know, the truth is that angry people, most times, when they do the things they do, they don't even know what they are doing. They don't remember. Wow. They don't remember what they, what they do because they do it in, in anger, in the heat of the moment. It's an emotion that it's uncontrolled. And because you react, you know, based on that emotion, by the time you come back to your senses, by the time you calm down, you forget. And you can share appreciation with the video is what you want to see by like, share and comment. I remember my humble self, Black Mamba. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. I go by the name Black Mamba. Don't forget, I thank God for my subscribers, my phone, and my sub. If you like, if you comment, if you subscribe, I'll keep thanking God for you. I love you all.